Welcome to CBT Nuggets course on what's new in SharePoint 2016. My name is Brian Alderman and I've been working with SharePoint since version 2007. My hat's off to you if you've been working with it since then because just in the last few versions, 7 to 10 to 13, even to 16, I've seen a significant amount of enhancements and additional functionality. And I'm excited to spend some time with you throughout this course getting you up to speed on SharePoint 2016. Now, I'm going to assume that you already are familiar with SharePoint 2013, and that's why you just want to know the nuts and bolts about SharePoint 2016. And that's what we're going to do throughout this course. Before we get to the meat and potatoes, I want to set your expectations as to what you can expect to find as you go through this course. Now, we have a baker's dozen, and for those of you who don't bake, like myself, that means 13 nuggets that are going to talk about SharePoint 2016. One of the things that we're going to look at is the use of minerals. These are extremely powerful, and they make our job as an IT pro much easier because now we can just pick what role we want a server to perform as we're adding it to the farm. Bingo, it's optimized, services are started and stopped as they need to be, and that server is going to perform that role within the farm. Now, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Some things we need to do before we even get to the installation, we need to talk about the software and hardware requirements. So we're going to go ahead and go through that. Then we're going to walk through really two installation types. We're going to walk through the installation of Beta 2. And one of the things Microsoft has introduced with SharePoint 2016 is a new and improved patching process. So the days of downloading gigabytes of information so we can update to the newest version of SharePoint, those are gone. So what we're going to do in our second installation is we're going to apply some duct tape and we're going to take our beta 2 and we're going to bring it up to the release candidate. We're not really going to use duct tape, but you know, duct tape is good for everything. So I thought I'd throw that out there. And we're going to use the GUI interface to perform this update. But as you can imagine, PowerShell has not been forgotten. So we are also going to discuss the PowerShell commands that we can use for managing our databases, security, service applications, as well as the upgrade process itself. We will spend a large amount of time talking about the upgrade process. It is going to be a database attach upgrade. That's the only supported type of an upgrade in SharePoint 2016. And we'll also talk about some of the requirements that we have in order for us to perform that upgrade. Once we've completed the installation or we perform the upgrade, we have some changes to some of the service apps. We have a brand new one for Project Server. That's right, Project Server is no longer a separate SKU. It's part of SharePoint Server 2016 and it's managed as a service application. We're going to take this baby for a test drive. So if you haven't seen SharePoint 2016, specifically Central Admin, we're going to take that for a cruise. And we can't talk about SharePoint 2016 without talking about hybrid. So we are going to talk about the hybrid capabilities, which means we're going to be able to integrate our on-prem SharePoint 2016 environment with SharePoint Online within Office 365. That's a huge part of why we even have a new on-prem. I don't know if you remember, but there was some talk for a while there wasn't going to be another release of SharePoint on-prem. But fortunately, the customer spoke and Microsoft listened. So we do have another on-prem version, but Microsoft is hoping for us to take advantage of the hybrid solution. And we'll be talking about the tools available for us to be able to do so. Now, remember, this is a release candidate. This is not the general availability, the GA. It's not the RTM or the release to manufacturing. That is coming soon. So there are things that are in here that are working okay right now. And with any hope, things will be working much better when RTM comes out in the spring. And with that said, I'm going to be providing you a plethora of links. You're going to see links throughout the entire course on where you can get additional information. The beauty of these links to these sites is that Microsoft is doing a pretty good job at updating these sites with additional information as the product grows. So most of them aren't static information, they are current information about the product, whether it be beta 2 or the release candidate. So I've nicknamed this course Linkalicious. <laughs> and what I want you to do is create a category of the bookmarks called SharePoint Server 2016. So as you encounter these links, you're able to quickly go out, open up the link and save that as a bookmark. And as I mentioned earlier, SharePoint Server 2016 on-prem is kind of a surprise for some of us because Microsoft has been making most of the updates to SharePoint through the SharePoint Online in Office 365. In fact, this is one of the first products that Microsoft has released where they've done all of the work in the cloud and kind of sort of reversed engineered it for an on-prem world. 
what we had in the past is the changes would be made in the on-prem version, whether it be an exchange or SQL Server or SharePoint, and then they would add those to the online version. Not the case here. This update is derived from SharePoint Online. Now, the last thing I want to do in this nugget is talk about the logical architecture because we're going to see that it's pretty similar to what we had in previous versions, but I do want to make sure everyone's on the same page when we're talking about web apps and service apps and SQL Server and site collections. So let's go ahead and take a look at SharePoint Server 2016 logical architecture. The SharePoint 2016 logical architecture includes both the SharePoint farm as well as SQL Server. We can't forget about SQL Server because... Without SQL Server, we can't have SharePoint because everything that we work with and all of the content that we apply to list and libraries is stored in SQL Server. So what we have here is we have our SharePoint 2016 farm and during the install, we identify our MinRoll server. And based on that MinRoll server, it's going to create service applications and those service applications will have application pools assigned to that. And we can add additional service apps, which will also consume an additional application pool, or we could use a generic application pool, as you'll see that I'm doing. We can create web applications, and our web applications host our content, and our service applications are tied to the web applications. So when I create a web app, if I wanted to be able to use search, I need to make sure that the search service application is associated with the proxy group that's hosting the web app. And same goes with managed metadata service and the user profile service. And then after I've created the web app, I create my root site collection, and then I can create other site collections using managed paths. Within our site collections, we have our subsites, we have our list and libraries, and within the list, we have items, and with libraries, we have documents, pictures, forms, whatever we want to store in that particular library. Now, the reason I have SQL on here is because everything we've done here is associated with SQL Server. When I created a farm, I get a config database and I get the central admin database that's created for me. Most service applications have at least one database associated with them. Some have multiple, like the search and the user profile service. And then every web app I create gets at least one content database and we can add additional content databases as we see fit. So this is kind of what's going on behind the scenes. So it's not just about the content. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is the idea that when we're working with Office 365, everything above this purple line is taken care of by Microsoft. They create the web apps and service applications and associate them with the appropriate application pools. They're managing my SQL Server content over here, including the content databases for the web apps, the service app databases, the config database, and the central admin database. So all we have to worry about when we're in Office 365 is down here. Now, is that good? Well, I'm kind of a control freak as an IT pro. I like being able to touch things. I like to be able to make sure they can do everything that I wanted to do. So I may not be comfortable with the Office 365 world because I lose control. And I've been an administrator for 20 some odd years and this is scary to me. It really, really is. But this is the way it is. So everything above that purple or magenta color is not managed by us. It's managed by Microsoft as well as everything in the SQL Server space. So that's something to consider. We also lose a lot of functionality when it comes to customizations. I can apply customizations at the site collection level because within Office 365, I manage that. But if I want to do anything at the web or service application level, yeah, that's not going to happen because Microsoft is responsible for that. So this is a picture of what's happening behind the scenes when you're working with SharePoint Server 2016. And I want you to keep this in mind as we go through the course because I'm going to be talking about site collections, web applications. We're going to create a few service applications. And while doing so, we'll associate it with an application pool. We're not going to go into SQL Server and worry about SQL Server, but we're going to talk about databases, versions of databases, location of databases, and types of databases. So there you have it. That's what's going on behind the scenes. Let's move into our next nugget where we're going to talk about the preparation for installing SharePoint 2016 RC because there is a lot that we need to take into consideration as we go through the deployment of SharePoint 2016. Well, I certainly hope this nugget was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.